Hello friends, welcome to video series on geography. This is my blog pmfis.com. Previously I've had a different domain poemansfriend.org but now I've shifted, shifted to pmfis.com. So all my notices are available on this blog. In my previous videos I've explained about pressure belts and permanent winds. Pressure belts, permanent winds and ocean currents play an important role in determining the temperature distribution on earth and hence ocean currents will be dealt under climatology instead of under oceanography. Ocean currents are a regular movement of water in a definite path and direction. And the forces that influence this movement of water are solar energy, wind, gravity and Coriolis force. Of all the forces, the most important force is the wind. We will see about the influence of permanent winds on the ocean currents in detail in this video. Other than wind, we have solar energy. Solar energy is the prime driving force or the primary energy which creates pressure systems and wind systems. So the ultimate source is sun. But the direct influence of solar energy is comparatively low compared to the winds. And we have gravity and Coriolis force. Solar energy creates differences in levels of ocean surface. For example, at the equator, the levels of waters are comparatively higher compared to at the poles. So this is because of differences difference in heat reception. At the equator, there is greater amount of sun's insulation and hence the volume of water is higher because of Greater, uh, greater temperature received, whereas at the poles, the amount of heat received is low and hence the density is greater, so the water molecules are much more compact and hence the levels of water surface here is lower. So these differences in temperature are leveled by gravity, so gravity simply moves water from a region of higher level to region of lower level. So these irregular levels of water is leveled down by gravity, so gravity is important in movement from region of higher level to region of lower level. Coming to Coriolis force, Coriolis force influences the direction of ocean currents. In northern hemisphere, the movement of ocean currents is clockwise in direction whereas in southern hemisphere they are anti-clockwise. So in my previous video I explained about Coriolis force. Coriolis force is a deflection force where the body moving in northern hemisphere moves or deflects towards it, its right whereas a body moving in southern hemisphere deflects towards its left. This is because of Coriolis effect and Coriolis effect in turn is generated due to Earth's rotation. And we have two different kinds of ocean currents. One is horizontal ocean currents, other ones are vertical ocean currents. Horizontal ocean currents are the ones we see in this figure. Vertical ocean currents mainly occur due to differences in temperature and salinity. The water which is cold and is higher in salinity is usually denser and this water falls to the bottom layers whereas the water which is less saline or lesser has lesser temperature is usually warmer and it is less denser and it, it raises towards the top layers. So this is nothing but convection. So convection influences vertical distribution or vertical movement of water whereas the horizontal movement is influenced by mainly primary winds. So cold water flows at the bottom levels whereas warm water flows at the surface or subsurface levels. So let us assume that this is the top layers of ocean water and this is bottom layers. So in the top layers the warm water flows and in the bottom layers the movement of water is mainly in the form of cold waters because cold water is denser so it flows at the bottom layers. So subsurface is nothing but a layer which is about 500 to 400 meters below the uh, upper surface. So within this layer the horizontal movement of warm water dominates. So coming to types of ocean currents, they mainly are based on whether they flow on the surface or the bottom. So one is surface currents, other one is deep water currents and then we have cold or warm water currents. So cold currents flows from higher latitudes to lower latitudes whereas warm currents flow from lower latitudes, lower latitudes to higher latitudes. And we have currents based on direction, one is clockwise in the northern hemisphere and anti-clockwise in the southern hemisphere. This is because of Coriolis effect. Coming to general characteristics, we have ocean currents which follow Ferrell's law. Ferrell's law is nothing but the law that states an object moving in the northern hemisphere moves towards its right and the object moving in the southern hemisphere moves towards its left. So this is nothing but Ferrell's law and the force that, that is governed by Ferrell's law is called as Coriolis force. And at lower latitudes, we see cold currents on eastern parts of the oceans and warm currents on the western parts. Whereas at higher latitudes, we see warm currents on the western parts and cold currents on the eastern parts. And air circulation over the oceans in middle latitudes is mainly anticyclonic. 
so we'll see this why and the exact opposite in the higher latitudes first one is ferrell's law we have seen how ferrell's law influences the direction of wind uh, ocean currents and then we have ocean currents which are cold at the lower levels that is at the lower latitudes we see cold currents in the western parts of the oceans as these cold currents flow from poles towards equator whereas on the west sorry on the eastern parts of the oceans we see cold currents at the lower latitudes whereas on the western parts the cold currents move from equator towards the western parts of the oceans so this current or uh, these waters are completely warmer so we see warm currents along western parts and this warm current moves towards higher latitudes so at higher la latitudes we observe warm currents at the western parts of the oceans whereas this warm currents mix with cold currents and move as cold currents at the top layers so we have warm currents on the western parts of the oceans and cold currents on the eastern parts of the oceans at higher latitudes and we have air circulation which is which is anti cyclonic in lower latitudes that is mostly in the presence of high pressure zone we have subtropical high pressure zone which is at about 25 to 35 degrees north and south latitudes so here the air subsides to the bottom layers so i have discussed this in detail in my previous video so this subsidence is associated with divergence process so in northern hemisphere convergence creates circular motion of wind this circular motion is usually anti cyclonic so we have ocean currents which are cyclonic in movement but if we consider <coughs> the movement of or the circulation of air cells we find that they are anti cyclonic in nature so when convergence is anti cyclonic the di divergence will be cyclonic so divergence in the lower latitudes is cyclonic hence the movement of ocean currents or the gyres in the oceans the gyre is nothing but circular movement of water are influenced by anti cyclonic movement in lower latitudes that is in subtropical high pressure belt whereas in subpolar low pressure belt we have convergence occurring at the surface convergence is associated with winds moving towards a low pressure center so this winds create a circular motion or a spiraling effect which is anti clockwise in direction so this anti clockwise direction also creates an anti clock anti clockwise movement of ocean waters in the upper levels so at the bottom layers we have the clockwise movement because of divergence whereas in upper layers we have anti clockwise movement because of convergence coming to ocean currents first let us look at the ocean currents of pacific ocean so in pacific ocean depends on depending on season the presence of various currents occur at various latitudes for example usually the north equatorial current in summer occurs about 5 to 10 degrees above equator and this current flows towards west this is under the influence of easterly trade winds so we know that at the intertropical convergence zone that is where trade winds meet it is it more more or less coincides with the equator in pacific ocean here the winds from both the hemispheres converge so at the equator we have deflection because of coriolis force so these converging winds influence the ocean currents so the trade winds coming from northern hemisphere are most more influential hence they push towards west so this is nothing but north equatorial current so this current piles up lot of warm water at the indonesian islands so this is what happens during normal conditions in el nino conditions usually the trade winds are weaker and hence the piling up of ocean uh, warm water at the indonesian islands is comparatively lower and the upwelling process at the peru and ecuador coast is comparatively lower and this event is called as el nino about which i'll be discussing in detail later so in normal condition what we see is piling up of warm water at the indonesian islands so this water that is a part of eastern pacific moves towards western pacific this is because of north equatorial current this current moves towards japanese islands and kamchatka peninsula in the form of kurishino current so kurishino current is a warm current and at this point there are two currents which converge at the upper hikado japanese island so this is called as hikado japanese island so one current coming from shekelen islands that is this part of oceans which is called as okhotsk current and the other one is kamchatka current or oeshio current which is coming 
from this region so this peninsula is called as kamchatka peninsula so this con currents converge with kurishino hot current or warm current so this flow in the form of north pacific current towards north america so here the the movement of ocean currents is influenced by westerlies so in near the in the tropics what we have are easterlies mostly easterlies so this movement of water is from east to west whereas in the upper latitudes about that is about the regions between subpolar low and subtropical high what we have is westerlies so westerlies make this converging currents move towards west so this west moving currents further divides into two branches one is cold current other one is hot current so the alaska current is cold current whereas the california current which flows along the coast of north america is called as a california current which is a cold current so when we me say it is a cold current it simply doesn't mean that it is very cold it only means that it is comparatively colder than the surrounding regions whereas we see that alaska is warm current so it is not a very warm current it is definitely very cold but it is comparatively wa warmer compared to the surrounding environment so usually the surrounding surrounding environment is very cold so this alaska current is comparatively warmer so it is called as warm current so this california current completes the cycle by converging with north equatorial current and this cycle repeats so depending on seasons the north equatorial currents shift north and south along with other equator other currents for example in winter usually intertropical convergence zone moves towards the equator that is south of equator and at this point the north equatorial current is somewhere along the equator so this shift is mainly due to change in seasons in summers we have greater temperatures in northern hemisphere so north equatorial current shifts further towards north and coming to southern pacific just like northern equatorial current we have southern equatorial current but the most important factor is counter equatorial current so counter equatorial current is a current which flows in opposite direction compared to north equatorial current and south equatorial current so due to trade winds we have south equatorial current which is flowing from east to west and we have north equatorial current which is also flowing from east to west and the counter equatorial current as the name itself suggests it flows in opposite direction from east to sorry west to east so what creates counter equatorial current usually the north equatorial current and the south equatorial current pile up huge amount of warm water near the indonesian and new guinea islands so this piling up of very warm water creates high higher level of uh, higher levels of oceans and we have seen how gravity plays a role in leveling down this surface and the region between north equatorial current and south equatorial current is associated with doldrums we have seen that intertropical convergence zone is nothing but a region of very calm winds at the surface so we have upliftment of air at the doldrums so there is huge amount of cloud formation and uh, rains but at the surface of oceans usually the air is very calm and hence there is no air that pushes from uh, the current from east to west and hence due to absence of this air the counter equatorial current becomes uh, very strong and it moves from west to east so the primary reason is the piling up of water on the west coast but the most important reason is the doldrums that is presence of calm region between north and equ south equatorial currents so south equatorial current breaks up as east australian current which is also warm current it mixes with west wind drift west wind drift is a current that is comparatively cooler and the winds that are flowing in this region are westerlies and they are very swift moving, moving winds because of less amount of continents so the westerlies influence this current that is east australian current in a great way and then we have this current forming as south pacific current which is a cold current as the regions are very cold and a branch moves towards atlantic ocean and another branch moves towards the equator in form of peru current peru current is a cold current which is also called as humboldt current h u m b o l d t current so peru current is a very important one because it brings cold water towards the equator and peru coast so this cold water is very important as it creates rich fishing grounds so and again the convergence of warm currents and cold currents is a very important region because they are the richest fishing grounds in the world for example we have seen at the hakadio island of japanese coast we have seen this convergence of warm and cold currents that is we have cold currents oeshio okats which are converging with kurishino current 
so this region is a very rich fishing ground because of mixing of cold and warm currents likewise we have another mixing zone here that is peru current mixes with south equatorial current so this also creates a very rich fishing ground so why are these rich fishing grounds first we need to know about plankton phytoplankton contains dingo flagellates and then we have uh, diatoms blue green algae that is cyanob uh, sorry blue green algae etc which are which are photosynthetic in nature so these are very important because they form food for various marine organisms especially fish so phytoplankton usually require two important components one is sunlight other one is nutrients nutrients like phosphates sulfates etc but we have ocean levels that is we have top layers and bottom layers usually at top layers sunlight is abundant abundantly available whereas at the top layers the presence of phosphates and uh, other nutrients is very low they are present at sub sub surfaces so the photosynthetic process of phytoplankton is comparatively very low when this kind of situation occurs so when there is mixing of cold uh, waters and warm waters usually the cold waters are very rich in nutrient rich in nutrients that is phosphates so when this nutrient rich water mixes with the warm water it is nothing but upwelling of cold water so what we have is cold currents which are flowing at sub surfaces so this cold water is uplifted so when this movement creates <coughs> south equatorial current there is a kind of vacuum created in this region this vacuum is is <coughs> filled by peruvian current which is flowing from bottom levels to top levels so this is nothing but upwelling so when there is upwelling of this cold peruvian current it usually brings rich nutrients towards the surface now the phytoplankton phytoplankton at the surface have the two components which are very essential one is sunlight other one is nutrients so so the nutrients are brought by cold current so in the presence of nutrients and sunlight they create uh, that is they prepare food in the form of photosynthesis and they multiply in large quantities which form great feed for fish so this mixing of cold and warm currents is very important as they breed a very rich fishing grounds so again remember the role of phyto uh, plankton phyto means light and plankton are very small marine organisms other than this we have great banks of north america so this is great banks region this is also a very rich fishing ground so we'll see that how before that let us take a question which was asked in 2015 prelims what explains the eastward movement of counter equatorial current so we have seen that counter equatorial current is caused mainly due to two reasons one is piling up of water on the west western part of oceans and the presence of doldrums so in this question both the options are present, present that is convergence of two equatorial currents and then occurrence of belt of calm near the equator the other two options are completely unrelated that is differences in salinity of water and earth rotation on its axis so earth rotation creates the coriolis force which only influences direction of uh, that is the clockwise direction in northern hemisphere and counter clockwise direction in southern hemisphere that is this movement of ocean waters is influenced by earth rotation so along with this we have one more important property if suppose this is a continent we know that earth is rotating from west to east so this continent is also moving from west to east so there is opposite force which is acting on the water so the water is moving from east to west because of the opposite movement of land so there is piling up of water on the eastern part of ocean or western part of continent uh, sorry eastern part of continent or western part of ocean because of earth rotation so earth rotation is a factor which brings water from west to east but it is not an important factor that creates west to sorry which earth rotation brings water from east to west so this is east and this is west and we have doldrums or under which the counter equatorial equatorial current happens here the counter equatorial current is from west to east so west to east is not under the influence of earth rotation this is wrong and differences in salinity creates only vertical movements not horizontal movements so this is also wrong coming to convergence convergence is an important factor but above convergence there is one very important factor which is the presence of doldrums so the answer for this is d though there is conflict between b and d but d is the most important point so d will be the answer now let us move on to currents of atlantic ocean like in pacific we have north equatorial 
counter equatorial and south equatorial currents so the northern north equatorial current splits as an atlas current which flows on the east of west indies and other branch which flows towards gulf of mexico here due to the reception of water from mississippi river the levels of water in florida that is gulf of mexico is much higher so this flows towards the cape of hatteras so this region is cape of hatteras in the form of florida color, florida current which is a warm current it mixes with anatelis current and from here what we have is gulf stream so this warm current which flows from cape of hatteras towards great banks is called as gulf stream so these are great banks it is this island is called as newfoundland which is part of canada and we have nova scotia which is also an important island here we have bay of fundy which is important for its tidal range about this we'll see later but now let us see about gulf stream so gulf stream converges with labrador current and east greenland current which are cold currents so this mixing of warm and cold currents give, gives rise to a very rich fishing grounds around newfoundland again remember how this mixing gives rise to upwelling of water so upwelling of cold water brings nutrient rich water to the surface and this helps in multiplying of phytoplankton phytoplankton numbers and this will in turn give rise to rich amount of food for fishes and hence these are very rich fishing grounds so newfoundland and the continental shelf of newfoundland is called as great banks so usually continental shelf also plays a very important role continental shelf is a very shallow <coughs> region of oceans so all these factors aid in making these grounds a rich fishing grounds so from here we what we have is north equator uh, north atlantic drift, drift which is a warm current this is one of the very important ocean currents because it greatly influences the climate of climates of in britain norway and all these regions scandinavian countries etc usually these countries are very close to arctic circle which is somewhere here but in spite of being under the influence of arctic, arctic circle the temperatures are comp com comparatively higher because of north atlantic atlantic drift and this current is very important in keeping the barents sea that is this part of the sea free of ice in summers so russia is able to transport or continue its supplies in this direction because of the presence of north atlantic drift which keeps all this part of the ocean free of ice in summers but in winters as the temperatures are very very low usually this part is completely frozen but still in summer it is great it is of great economic importance for all these countries that is britain norway and russia so most important cities of russia like moscow stalingrad etc are present on the western part of russia so it gets a direct access from with this help of north equator north atlantic drift so it gets a direct sea route towards usa and other parts of the world <coughs> so north atlantic drift is from economic perspective and climatologic perspective is a very important current so from there we have norwegian current which is comparatively warmer so it helps scandinavian countries in maintaining comparatively less extreme climates and this branch splits as canary's canary's current canary's current is a very cold current so it keeps the climates of portugal spain and some african nations comparatively colder so again this completes the cycle but here we have one important physical feature called as sargasso sea sargasso sea is formed mainly due to the mo <coughs> the movement of ocean waters so the north atlantic drift anatelis current gulf stream north atlantic uh, north atlantic drift north equatorial current and canaries current all this creates a gyre or circular movement of ocean water so this circular movement of ocean water creates a sea called as sargasso sea so sargasso sea is important from environment perspective because it it is a very rich marine eco region its productivity is comparatively very higher this is because when there is circular movement of water usually solid particles accumulate at the center so you can observe this in a bucket of water where you put some sand or something else and if you just rotate or create a whirlpool in that water we see that all the solid particles accumulate at the center so this is what the principle that helps in making the sargasso sea a very important eco region so this gyre or circular movement of water brings all the nutrients and all of the solid particles towards uh, all of the floating particles towards the center of the sargasso sea so this nutrient rich water helps in uh, greater marine productivity
so the most important uh, fish uh, organisms available here are seaweed which are also called as sargassums that's the hence the name sargasso sea so it is unique because of this species and there is huge amount of productivity in this region and hence there is thriving marine ecosystems so again important feature is that it has this sea has no land border so it is bordered by all ocean currents on all the directions it it is also called as north atlantic subtropical gyre because it it, it is under the influence of the divergence of winds that are at the that forms at the subtropical high pressure belt we have seen that in subtropical high pressure belt we have divergence so due to divergence we have this anti uh, clockwise direction of the movement of ocean currents or the movement of ocean currents in sargasso sea so it roughly coincides with azores high azores high is the high which is a broken region of subtropical high which coincides with the location of sargasso sea so usually somewhere here is azores high now let us see the south atlantic ocean like in the south pacific here also we have the uh, warm currents like brazil current which is a branch of south equatorial current and there is one current which is flowing towards the part eastern coast of argentina which is called as falkland current so these islands are falkland falkland islands so falkland falkland islands are not a part of argentina as they appear to be they are part of great britain so these territory are a part of great britain these are overseas territories of great britain so this is cold current and again here there is mixing of warm and cold currents hence this is also a good fishing ground and then we have brazil current which mixes with westward drift and it flows towards west here this cold current breaks up as bengula current so bengula current is important as this also creates a rich fishing ground but this mixing occurs mainly at tropical waters so the productivity is comparatively low as i have so told you that in tropical waters usually the nutrients are present at bottom layers and hence the the amount of nutrients available in tropical waters is low and hence the productivity is comparatively low compared to other regions like newfoundland or uh, the japanese islands so let us now look at currents of indian ocean so indian ocean currents are mainly influenced by monsoon winds so here the currents behave in a different manner let us look at winds in winter season in winter season we have northwest northeast monsoons so this is usually the direction of northeast monsoons which bring rainfall to tamil nadu so some a branch splits and flows along the coastal regions so this doesn't bring any rain, re, much rain to northern parts of india because of absence of ocean from which it is traversing so it is comparatively drier here so this wind is very important in creating anti clockwise movement of water in bay of bengal here there is north equatorial current so which flows in this direction creating anti clockwise motion in arabian sea and the anti clockwise direction in bay of bengal is due to north northeast monsoons so it creates a complete cycle in the bay of bengal so this is a cycle complete cycle in bay of bengal so here the monsoons plays a very important role and like in atlantic ocean we have south equatorial current and counter equatorial current the mozambic current flows between madagascar madagascar and mozambic of africa and the other branch is called as agulhas current this mixes with again west wind drift it flows as west australian current and again this region is a good fishing ground but it is not as good as those in temperature regions because of as it uh, as it is present, present in tropical regions so tropical regions are comparatively low in marine productivity because of less amount of nutrients and less amount of phyt phytoplankton and coming to summers we don't have north equatorial current and counter equatorial current this is the most important part because in summers what we have is there is shifting of intertropical co convergence zone towards uh, the north of equator and hence there is shifting of ocean currents as well so instead of north and south uh, counter equatorial current what we have is south equatorial current which shift to, towards north of equator so this current flows in this direction creating an anti clockwise uh, sorry clockwise movement in arabian sea so this flows again into bay of bengal creating one more anti clockwise movement 
so here it is uh, the north equatorial current and counter equatorial current are absent so what we see here is south equatorial current which splits up as a branch in arabian sea and bay of bengal and another branch of mozambique current so again exactly uh, the same thing happens with the southern region as in winter so the southern parts have same behavior whereas in the northern parts the movement of ocean waters is influenced by monsoon winds so in some of this is the direction of monsoon winds usually we have masculine high from where these easterlies change their direction and moves towards india in the form of monsoon winds so this monsoon winds creates this movement of ocean currents in bay of bengal and arabian sea so in indian ocean the movement of ocean water in the northern part of indian ocean is mainly influenced by monsoon drift or monsoon winds so let us look at look at a question on this which of the following factors is responsible for the change in regular direction of ocean currents in indian ocean indian ocean is half an ocean it simply means that the northern part is not full because it is occupied by land indian ocean has monsoon drift indian ocean is a land locked ocean and indian ocean has great variation in salinity coming to salinity salinity the behavior of salinity is similar in almost all the major oceans so this point is wrong indian ocean is a land locked ocean that is indian ocean is land locked and indian ocean is half an ocean are uh, similar points and they have no effect on the movement of ocean currents they only influence the path but they don't influence the reversal of ocean currents so so change in regular direction is mainly attributed to monsoon drift as we have seen so the answer is monsoon drift this is comparatively easier question so this is complete picture of all ocean currents so the red ones are warm currents whereas the uh, blue ones are cold currents so i've discussed all this till now this is a complete picture in the given map which of the following pairs of ocean currents are shown so recall the ocean currents till now we have discussed bengula and falkland current so these currents are a part which flow in the part of uh, south uh, south america so we have south america we see one as falkland current other one is brazil current and then it moves and at africa it breaks up as bengula current so in this region what we see is bengula current so the answer must have bengula current and it must not have falkland current because falkland current occurs at argentina so this option is wrong and then we have canary and humboldt current humboldt current is nothing but peruvian current the other name for peruvian current is humboldt current and canary is current are the ones which flow near the northern northwestern regions of africa so this is also not an answer and we have agulhas and goina current agulhas current flows on the eastern part of africa so this is also not an option and the only left one is bengula and goina so goina is a minor current but again this part is called as a country called as goina is present in this region so the current here is called as goina current and in general we have bengula current so the option is d so location based questions will be asked in this manner now let us look at effects of ocean currents so one important factor is desert formation in tropical and subtropical west coast previously i have explained the effect of trade winds and also onshore and offshore winds in the form in the form, uh, formation of deserts their role in formation of deserts in this part we'll see the role of ocean currents so moderate climates at the coasts are created because of ocean currents we we have seen that the ocean currents bring cold waters into warmer regions and warmer waters into colder colder regions and hence there is moderating effect and we have seen about eastern uh, the behavior of ocean currents in higher and lower latitudes and mixing of cold and warm waters bear rich fishing grounds and they are the most important part in ocean currents and the mixing also creates a very foggy like climate with little drizzle that is rainfall in the form of drizzle so foggy climate are associated with very completely covered skies and hence with the visibility is very low so these regions are not good for navigation that is air navigation but the foggy climate is important as it is very favorable for fishing because of the presence of cold current and the absence of intensity of sun so results in warm and rainy climates in tropical and subtropical latitudes so they are the major source of tropical cyclones so we, we have seen that in pacific ocean that is in the indonesian islands etc the piling up of warm water so this piling up of warm water is important in creating typhoons in pacific ocean in indian ocean in bay of bengal we see the formation of 
cyclones again cyclones are formed due to accumulation of warm waters so ocean currents in import are important play an important role in bringing cyclones so the question is the presence of hot deserts between 20 and 30 degrees latitudes so let us look at regions where cold currents influence the weather we can see in this region we have californian current so it creates a foggy condition and in this region at the new so in this region at newfoundland and great banks we have the movement of gulf stream and mixing of labrador and uh, eastern greenland currents so again here it's a foggy climate and here we have canaries current we have bengula current here and then we have peruvian or humboldt current and here we have west australian current here we see kurushino oeshio and okots current meeting so all these regions are foggy uh, have foggy climates so and because of presence of fog and also presence of cold currents these regions create a desiccating effect of atmosphere so atmosphere has little amount of moisture and this cold currents doesn't aid the formation of great amount of moisture because the cold waters usually are bad because they don't there is no uh, great amount of evaporation when there is no evaporation there is no moisture in water so they create a desiccating effect and hence the air surrounding these parts has has very little moisture and hence they don't bring any rain towards these regions and this is why these regions are extremely arid because there is no rain formation because of presence of cold waters so cold wa waters play an important role in formation of deserts only in tropical and subtropical regions so what could be the main reason for the formation of african and european desert belt it is located in the subtropical high pressure belt so we have seen how presence of subtropics subtropical high pressure belt create deserts and then we have seen how cold currents aid in desert formation but in option we have seen that influence of warm currents so this option is wrong so the answer is only one and again ocean currents are slow surface moving of water in the ocean ocean currents assist in maintaining the earth's heat balance ocean currents are set in motion primarily by prevailing winds ocean currents are affected by configuration configuration of the oceans so this is true prevailing winds it is true and earth heat balance this is also true and the most tricky option is ocean currents are slow surface moving waters so coming to the movement of ocean currents usually the movement of ocean currents in pacific ocean is about 5 knots so 1 knot is equal to 1.8 kilometers so 5 knots will be equal to about 9 kilometers that is the ocean currents travel at a speed of 9 to 10 kilometers per hour so this can be considered as a comparatively faster movement of water so it cannot be ocean currents cannot be considered as slow surface mo uh, slow movement of water so this option is wrong so this particular option is very tricky so the answer identifying the answer will be very uh, tough a tough job and this is kind of a, a tough question we can see there are two options present so it is tough to decide between point 1 but according to official key the answer is one and also ocean currents are usually considered as fast moving uh, movements of ocean waters so consider the following factors rotation of earth air pressure and wind density of ocean water revolution of earth which of the following influence ocean currents coming to rotation i have told that due to westward west to east movement of earth we have east to west movement of ocean waters this is because of rotation and also due to wind there is greater push of east to west water and then we have density of ocean water which creates horizontal movements sorry vertical movements so all these factors aid in movement of ocean waters coming to revolution of earth revolution of earth mainly creates seasons so seasons only shift the intertropical convergence zone so they only shift the location of these currents that is they shift towards north in the uh, in the summer and south towards uh, in the winter so coming to which factors influence the ocean currents so the answer can be taken as all the four but the official key has given b as answer so they have ignored revolution of earth because it indirectly affects it doesn't affect directly so that may be the reason why they excluded this answer but if we consider rotation of earth it results in seasons and seasons also influence ocean currents so coming to the presence of phytoplankton phyto phytoplankton and marine diversity we can see that the temperate regions which are very green in color as we can see are very rich with phytoplankton because of cold currents and also uh, lesser temperatures creates ideal grounds for breeding of phytoplankton 
Whereas if you see a tropical regions, even though there is mixing of cold and warm currents in certain regions like here and then here, we see that the presence of phytoplankton is very low because the tropical that is the, the productivity at equators is very low as I've already explained because there is little upwelling and there is little amount of nutrients available for phytoplankton. So this is what till now we have discussed about pressure belts, wind belt, wind systems and ocean currents. So all these factors influence in temperature distribution and temperature distribution is indicated in terms of isotherms. So isotherms are imaginary lines joining places with equal temperatures. So this is about general isothermal trend. They are influenced by continentiality. Usually as we go deep within the continuous, the temperature range greatly varies. In, co in winters they are very cold whereas in summers they are very hot. And then we have other reasons as you can read in this slide. So based on all these factors we have distribution of ocean uh, that is temperature distribution. So making use of knowledge of wind systems and ocean currents we can arrive at the temperature distribution on earth. So I am not going to discuss this in detail, I will be only telling about important features. So in this figure we see isotherms in January in northern hemisphere that is it is winter in northern hemisphere. So here we see this upward bending of isotherms. This is because of the presence of North Atlantic drift. We have seen that North Atlantic drift brings greater temperatures into these higher latitudes. So we can see this bend is mainly due to the presence of North Atlantic drift. So usually when isotherms move towards much towards higher latitude, it simply means that the temperature difference is very low. And we can see there is close spacing between isotherms. It simply means that there is greater changes in temperatures in these regions whereas wide spacing indicates that the temperature fall is very low. So here the temperature fall is very low whereas if we consider the same between these very closely spaced isotherms the temperature difference is very sharp. So this is the distribution in July. So by studying this you can understand usually in July it is summer in northern hemisphere and winter, winter in southern hemisphere. Thus, so the warm waters are very hot. So we have cold currents on the other side. So we can see this shift in this change in behavior of isotherms is due to presence of warm currents on eastern parts of the continents and west, uh, cold currents on the western parts. So you imagine how this is formed. So explaining this will take a lot of time. And also they are not much important for exam. So the important one is North Atlantic drift and how it bulges these isotherms towards north. So this is all about ocean currents and the temperature difference based on ocean currents. So if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel where you can, uh, you'll get be, you'll be getting the updates regularly. And thanks for watching. Keep visiting.